Some more NFL draft content coming your way here. Uh, today, I'm going to be going over my top five favorite or top five best total team drafts of this past uh, class. So what that means is obviously the totality of the draft class for a specific team. Which team from top to bottom do I feel did the very best this year at taking prospects, uh, at least on paper? Obviously, it's way too early to tell any of this stuff, but we're going to give it a go anyway. Number five for me uh, are the Los Angeles Chargers. So the Chargers did uh, a really, really good job uh, in the first three rounds. I thought that they got very solid uh, to even great value for each of their first three picks. Uh, obviously, Joe All out of Notre Dame speaks for himself. That's exactly the team that I had drafting him in my mock draft that I did a couple of weeks ago uh, with my friend Dan uh, on this channel. Check it out if you haven't seen it. Uh, it should be on uh, uh, in my channel uh, on my page. So go f uh, go find that for you. Uh, so Joe All, again, number five uh, in the draft. Is it the best overall value in terms of, you know, uh, where he ranks in the class versus where you took him, no. Uh, but he was the best tackle in the class. Excuse me as a video starts playing against my will here. Um, but anyway, yeah, uh, Joe Alt was the best tackle in the class. Uh, you need to get Justin Herbert some help on the offensive line. And then what'd you go ahead and do? You made a trade with New England to move up to 34 to get Ladd McConkie, uh, one of my favorite players in the entire draft. I think it's a great fit in, in Los Angeles. I think he's going to be very dependable uh, for Justin Herbert. Uh, obviously, you needed to get some weapons and get some weapons they did. Uh, we'll talk about more later in the draft. Junior Colson. Michigan guy, obviously going to go play for his former college coach. I had a early second round grade on him. He obviously fell a little bit, uh, and uh, John Harbaugh, or excuse me, Jim Harbaugh, uh, able to get him uh, in the uh, third round here. So I thought that was very, very uh, good value here. Justin Aboyge, uh, or Boy, uh, a boy I don't know how to pronounce that one exactly. Uh, somebody in the comment section maybe let me know. I uh, don't really know much about him, uh, quite frankly. Uh, you know, I had him around, uh, you know, late to late fourth to early fifth round pick. Uh, so, you know, not the best value uh, in my opinion, but hey, anytime you get a guy out of Alabama, uh, you know, probably not going to be that bad of an idea to, to get him on your squad. Uh, Tarheeb still, uh, you know, not really, again, don't really know much about the guy. Uh, so for me, the middle of the draft was kind of, kind of, eh. Uh, I think you probably could have uh, you know, maybe gone corner a round earlier. Uh, and because you know, again, they need some help on their defense as well. Uh, but, but Kamani Vidal at Troy, I like a lot. And then obviously Brendan Rice, you know, a guy that you know, most people had, you know, a third or fourth round grade on going in the seventh round. Uh, you take a shot on the kid. Uh, not the fastest guy in the world, but obviously we know he has the pedigree to be successful. We know who his dad is. Uh, and then Cornelius Johnson, big athletic receiver out of Michigan, uh, six foot three, about two fifteen, uh, maybe even a little bit, uh, maybe even a little bit uh, heavier than that. I can't exactly remember, but I know six foot three is right. Uh, was one of the most athletic um, uh, wide receivers in at the combine in terms of uh, how he graded. Uh, I think he was a top twenty guy, uh, maybe just outside the top twenty. Uh, in terms of athleticism. So obviously you're taking a flyer on an athlete in the seventh round. You know, n not n not necessarily a bad idea there. Uh, so again, really good draft class. Absolutely love, uh, you know, they kind of a great sandwich, right? So you got, you know, the top three rounds and the last three picks I think are great. And then the middle, it's okay, which is why they're at number five for me. Uh, but I still think great draft class overall. It always seems like the best teams, despite wherever they take uh, or wherever their pick falls in the draft, they always seem uh, to take the right guys. It's why teams that can stay at the top can stay at the top for so long. The Baltimore Ravens are one of those teams, and I think that they had one of the best drafts uh, of any team. They're at number four on my list. Nate Wiggins obviously speaks for itself. I love his competitive nature. He's one of my favorite players in the entire draft. I had him as a top three defensive back uh, in this class. You got him at number 30. We obviously know how the defensive backs fell. We obviously know what happened there. And so for the Ravens to sit at number 30 and take Nate Wiggins, I think was great value. And I think that they obviously did a great job. Roger Rosengarten, another guy that I probably had a uh, early to mid second round pick grade on. Uh, but they got him in the late second round. So that's another job of, of really, really great value. Uh, Adiza Isaac. Uh, at a Penn State, another guy that I had a late second, early third round grade on, got him in the late third round. Tez Walker had a third round grade on him, got him in the fourth. TJ Tampa had a third round to early fourth round grade on him, got him in the late fourth. So you can see the pattern of they are getting guys 
that are rated a little bit higher than where they drafted him. And if you can do that consistently, you're going to do really well. Rasheen Ali had a really, really uh, good combine uh, despite... Uh, I believe it was in the Senior Bowl. He had a ruptured uh, bicep tendon. Uh, I think that obviously played a pretty big part in, in, in you know how, why he fell in the draft. Otherwise, I think he probably could have gone uh, in the third or fourth round. Uh, and so obviously you get him in the late uh, fifth round here. I think that was really good. Don't know much about Devin Leary. Uh, obviously, you know what? Why not get yourself a backup quarterback? And then these two fellas all the way in the back here. Don't really know much about. Not going to lie to you guys. Uh, but hey, you know what? When you basically, in my opinion, hit on your first, what's that? Six draft picks and get great value for all six of them. You're probably doing something right. So you're landing in my top five here. Congrats, Ravens. You did a fantastic job. A lot of people's consensus number one class uh, this year. The Pittsburgh Steelers at number three. Uh, a great class. Obviously, you got fantastic value. Troy Falutanu out of Washington. Uh, a lot of people had him going in the top 12 to 15 picks. You got him at 20. That's a really, really nice value, especially considering all the offensive players that went in the first round. Uh, Roman Wilson. I, I think he got really good value. I had a, a mid-second round grade on Roman Wilson. I love Roman Wilson. I, I was really hoping the Patriots would take him. Uh, unfortunately, it didn't happen. And then Peyton Wilson, we all know uh, I ranked him, I think it was three of uh, my top uh, five best non-first round value picks video, something like that. You guys go check that out if you haven't seen it uh, and check me on the exact number. It might have been four, might have been two, but somewhere in that. I know he wasn't last, I know he wasn't first. Um, so we already know that those three picks were really great value. Uh, the reason why this is not number one for me, I'm not in love with Zach Frazier. I had a late second round grade on him. I think he's a good prospect. Uh, but he didn't test super well at the Combine. Uh, he's got pretty short arms, which can deter some people. I don't always buy into that, but when you don't test super well at the Combine and, uh, you know, you got you got that short arm thing kind of working for you as a center, um, it, it kind of scares me a little bit. And that's not to say that he can't be a great player. He certainly can, and the Pittsburgh Steelers believe that he certainly uh, can do that. But for me, I'm not as in love with Zach Fraser as some other people were. Uh, so for me, kind of dock some points a little bit there. I don't think that was the best value pick at the time. Uh, but you know what? You're shoring up your offensive line, so I understand. And then for me, uh, you know, Mason McCormick, South Dakota State. Watched a little bit of film on him. Uh, didn't particularly see anything that I loved. Uh, uh, but, you know, sure, why not? Take a flyer on him in the fourth round. Uh, I probably had a mid to late fourth round grade on him at this point. So, you know, you got him right around where I would have picked him. So that's pretty decent value. And then Logan Lee and Ryan Watts, I, I genuinely don't know much about. Uh, and so I can't really speak on those guys much. But for me, you know, uh, again, great class. Obviously got great value on, on several of your picks here. Fantastic value on Peyton Wilson. Fantastic value on Fao Tanu, and in my mind, fantastic value about Roman uh, on Roman Wilson, although some people would disagree. Uh, but Fraser, to me, you know, maybe he goes around here. Uh, maybe he goes a little bit later, ideally. But uh, regardless, I think this is a really good draft class overall, just not my number one. So very close to being my number one draft class. It was a toss-up between, uh, obviously, the Detroit Lions, who I have here, and who will ultimately be in my number one draft class. Terry and Arnold uh, at number 24. The only thing that's making me uh, a little bit hesitant on, on saying that this was phenomenal value is you did have to trade up for him, so you did have to give up a little bit of value. Uh, but you know what? It doesn't matter. Terry and Arnold, a fantastic pick. You obviously get your guy uh, at number 24 when he was projected, at least in my mock draft. I don't remember exactly where he went. Uh, let me see here. Uh, I'm not, I'm not really finding it at the moment, but that's okay. Um, so I think I probably had him going number 21, 19, 17, somewhere, uh, around there. Uh, so this is a really, really fantastic pick. Uh, obviously you know, pretty good value in the first round. Ennis Rakestraw, uh, a guy that I had an early second round, a mid second round grade on, uh, you got him a little bit later. Giovanni Manu uh, is a guy that I had a, a third round grade on and a guy that 
I was kind of hoping the Patriots would take in the third round, or at least one of the guys that I was hoping they'd take in the third round. Uh, I really, really like this kid. Uh, he's obviously coming in through the NFL's international program, uh, but you could see here uh, he, they got him in the late fourth round, which I thought was great value. Sione Vaki, um, I, I didn't understand that pick at the time. I thought he was a bit of an odd prospect. But then people pointed out to me, hey, you know, they do have that new kickoff rule. Uh, and, you know, he seems like an absolutely perfect guy to implement, to, to, you know, have on your team for that. And I completely agree. I think, obviously, with that knowledge and hindsight, I probably like this pick a little bit better than I did uh, when I saw it happen. But Kai Wingo, a guy that I had a fifth round grade on, goes in the sixth round, mid-sixth round, no less, uh, to the Lions here. And then, obviously, my number one value pick in the entire draft, Christian Mahogany. I had a I know this is crazy. Second round grade on Christian Mahogany. I am in love with Christian Mahogany. Obviously, I'm a, I'm a, it's a homer pick. Uh, you know, I'm from Boston. He's from Boston College. Uh, but, you know, I, I, amazing value. This, this, That pick alone almost took them over the top to number one. But it did not because it was one team that I liked just a hair better. It's very rare that I find a draft class that pretty much every pick was good value. Uh, and really helps out your team, not even necessarily, uh, uh, you know, right now, but in future years to come, uh, you know, uh, both right now and in future years to come, I should say, the Philadelphia Eagles. Man, uh, there's a reason why this team are perennial contenders every single year. It's because they know how to draft. I am looking through this. Genuinely, I cannot find somebody that was bad value. Kenyon Mitchell, obviously one of my top value first round picks. Cooper DeGene, one of my top value second round picks. Jalex Hunt, a guy that I had an early third round grade on, goes in the late third round. Will Shipley, one of the best running backs in the entire draft. I probably would have taken a flyer. I would have been okay if a team took a flyer on him in the second or early third round. I didn't quite have him that high. I had him in the mid to late third round. But they get him in the late fourth round, so it doesn't matter. That's great value. Anaya Smith out of Texas A&M, a guy that I probably had a late third, early fourth round, maybe mid fourth round grade on. Again, I'm not looking at my notes right now, but I knew it was somewhere in that you know 100 ish range, 90 to 100 range uh, for him. And obviously, you get him in the fifth round. Jeremiah Trotter out of Clemson. A guy that I think I had a, a mid-fifth round grade on, so it was right around here, but still basically right on, dead on, where, where I would have taken him. Trevor Keegan out of Michigan. A guy that, you know, uh, had an amazing college career and obviously got injured late in his career. A guy that you're getting in the fifth round. A guy who's going to be a tremendous leader. A guy that's hopefully going to help continue to uh, solidify your uh, interior offensive line like you've had over the last couple of years with guys like Jason Kelsey and the like. Johnny Wilson is a guy that I was hoping so hard that the Patriots would draft and move to tight end. I think that he is an amazing weapon that anybody in the NFL can use, either as a big wide receiver, red zone threat, or a guy that can move to tight end and just be an amazing route runner in the slot or at the H-back position, whatever it is, and you got him in the sixth round. I had a fourth round grade on the guy. He was He's fantastic. Maybe a fifth round grade on him. And then Dylan McMahon out of NC State. Again, I had a probably sixth round pick uh, grade on him, so you got him right around where I would have taken him uh, as well. Wow fantastic value for every single pick in my opinion and again these top two here uh to get the two in my opinion the two best defensive backs in the entire draft in Kenyon Mitchell and Cooper DeJean and you didn't have to move for Kenyon Mitchell and I saw a really cool video today of them trying to trade up to pick 39 them being the Eagles obviously trying to trade up to pick 39 uh to take him uh, and the Rams ended up trading for 39, but they didn't take Cooper DeGene. They traded to 40, and then they end up getting their guy. I saw a really cool video about that today, and it blew my mind. Uh, they obviously were targeting Cooper DeGene, uh, and I picked 39. It wouldn't have mattered. It would have been the same exact uh, thing. I would have been saying the same exact thing uh, for the Eagles. Amazing, amazing value. Uh, again, you did have to trade up to get DeGene, but it doesn't matter. I would have put him in the first round had he not gotten hurt. I probably would have put him in the early first round had he not gotten hurt. So really fantastic value here. Uh, I cannot believe uh, this draft class by the Eagles. Uh, this was one of the best draft classes I've seen on paper in quite a while. And so they're my number one. What do you guys think uh, here uh, with, with all my opinions? Uh, looking back, um, you know, there is an argument to be made for Detroit. I like Detroit's uh, draft class. I just think that 
The Eagles obviously used, you know, they had more picks and got more value, I think, overall. But obviously, I think Detroit was uh, a fantastic draft class as well. So let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Uh, what would you guys have had uh, all of these draft classes rated? Is there somebody that I forgot? Would you want to put, like, maybe Arizona up here or a different team? Let me know what you guys think. Thank you so very much for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you all next time.